In today's review, we have a new entry into the survival horror series, a strong combo of Dead Island mixed with Mirror's Edge. Run free and hit hard, light is your saving grace. Let's get things started. Game review all set, ready, go! A crane flies towards the light. Welcome to Dying Light, an open world game that's not all about fighting zombies alone. <laughs> no my friends, it's more about trapping and looting all types of enemies since weapons in game break easily, which is a good thing to keep the pace of the game exciting and fun. This gives the open world life, because finding weapons in new ways to elevate yourself is key, and that gives the city purpose in every corner, rooftop, and corridor. So, Dying Light may look like Dead Island, but let's look in deeper. Here are the control maps. Notice anything familiar? Jump is the right shoulder button, which auto grabs and climbs onto ledges, and is the foundation of the parkour system in Dying Light. See, another point in Dying Light is traveling from point A to point B, knocking some side missions out of the way. The free running and scope while traversing an area feels just like DICE's Mirror's Edge. This is a huge plus in my book because I always felt that a zombie game nowadays feel too slow, and reaching rooftops and fire ladders are also ways to narrowly escape danger. Controls are tight in this game, and you need them to be. Because of the frequent running and scavenging you have to do in the city, it becomes second nature as the day and night cycle cling towards this mechanic as well. Next up, let's talk about combat. The differences between zombie and human combat are very apparent. Zombie combat is cool and effective and seems like the more focused part of Dying Light in that aspect. There are many different types of zombies in this game, ranging from smaller grunts to spitters to bigger giant hammer wielding tank like zombies that take more hits and more strategy to avoid getting critical damage on. Hell, I even seen them toss smaller zombies around like toys and it was funny to watch. Combat against other humans is the weakest part of the game overall. It's basically a waiting game of hit and dodge and it's very annoying. The mechanics behind the basic stamina swings are not that effective against bandits and mini bosses when they block almost every single attack and slow down the pace to a crawl. Also weapons come in a huge variety in the game like pipes, swords, axes and guns, also grenades and firecrackers to distract zombies. In the beginning your arsenal is weak but towards the end of the game you become, you become a force to be reckoned with. What's also cool is that Weapons in game come in all shapes and sizes, and depending on how large your weapon is, can affect your mobility when equipped. And speaking of day and night cycles, the game drastically changes tempo in each part of the day. Here's the 411. In daytime, it's mostly for gathering supplies, setting up traps, and doing casual missions, including airdrops that gradually lead to nighttime. And the zombies are mostly docile. Now at nighttime is a whole new ball game. Hunters, grunts, and zombies run faster and cause way more damage. But Killing zombies and doing mission statements in the game will earn you extra experience points of what you earn during the daytime. And it's the perfect time for you to set those traps off and trigger, confuse, and stun incoming danger. Other cool features in Dying Light include x-ray effects with stuns and decapitation, skill trees, cool traps like spikes and car alarms, dynamic airdrops, fast crafting, and the hunter missions that makes the game really intense that brings drop in drop out multiplayer. There are some hiccups in Dying Light, the weak combat system against humans like I mentioned before, the fetch quests in the game are really really apparent, especially with radio towers and missions where you have to find somebody, come back, and this, this is a lot of backtrack and unnecessary. And then the biggest thing is some screen tearing and some bad draw distances within the game when you see the overall scope of the city. That occurred, um, not frequently, but you know, occasionally, and it's not a too big of a gripe on Dying Light, but it it was a pen.
And finally, the final verdict of Dying Light. For gameplay grade, I'm giving it a solid A. It's faster, tougher, and stronger than Dead Island, but there's a few hiccups here and there that makes it really at the top of my list. Replay value is going to be at a high to mid level, depending on if you're going to play multiplayer and if you're a collector or not, and if you want to craft all the weapons. And for the consumer report, I'm giving it a mid price, go ahead and collect that when the price drops down just a little bit. Or if you, you know, first time getting into the survival of a horror sandbox kind of game, rent it and check it out. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video and I have fun reviewing this game. I love playing great games and hopefully there's plenty more to come in 2015. Comment below and let me know how you feel about the review and uh, some more feedback on how I can make my content a little bit better. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Next time on Alter Element Games, we hit on a popular topic in recent history, on the game that failed hard called Sonic Boom. We discuss why this reboot failed and the development hell that can be compared to another game that had the opposite effect. It's time to bring it on! We'll see you guys next time, Cafe Ole, we're out of here! Alter Element Games, where gameplay is everything.